for those of you that aren't familiar, well, you all probably are, um, with Willy. Um, he does some of the best videos on YouTube, in my opinion. Uh, very well informed. He made a video a couple days ago, how one of Classic WoW's last balance servers fell. So I believe you guys were talking about this earlier tonight. I wonder, I wonder if it is. You think it's on Fire Maw? I haven't even like watched this. I wouldn't watch a second of this video. I saw the title and I was like, I think we need to watch this. Is it Fire Maw, you think? So let's let's take a peek at this video as well. Um, Willie, if you guys say, okay, this is really screwed up. Like, I mean, I'm subscribed to these guys. Why is it not showing that I'm subscribed? Am I on the right account? Yeah, that's weird. Anyways, Willie is somebody that if you're not subscribed to Willie, you definitely should. Um, makes great videos. Like, turn on the bell as well and, you know, watch his videos. But I'll leave the links down to his video down below as well. But uh, I'll give you my opinion on the video. I think it's Firemall, but I think we can probably have a pretty good guess as to what Blizzard's done here. Because they've done it to a lot of servers. Balance has always been an ethereal and difficult to achieve goal within World of Warcraft. And for nearly two decades, it's been a core part of the game's fantasy. Horde versus Alliance. Two factions, two sides, and a never-ending series of back-and-forth conflicts. Over the years, though, more often than not, players have found themselves witnessing their faction leaders working together. And story-wise, both sides putting differences aside to address a greater evil. The lit... Well, what do you guys think of the whole we we like each other now? I don't like what they're doing in retail where you can play. I, I personally am against it. I, I like the Horde versus Alliance stuff. I remember the days back in the day when, you know, you hated Alliance players. And now it's like, oh, can we play with each other? I don't know. I just don't like it. Lich King himself during his named expansion, Deathwing the Destroyer in Cataclysm, Garrosh Hellscream's True Horde during Mists of Pandaria, and so many more. During Battle for Azeroth, Blizzard reimagined servers from either PvE or PvP to instead just Normal or RP, a new PvP mode known as... I don't like the Normal mode stuff either, like I really, really don't like it war mode was introduced this could be toggled on or off at your faction capital and whilst you had it on in the open world it was like playing on old pvp servers however with additional pvp specific talents activated as well as boost to experience and reputation it was all about adding some risk and reward and in the final major content patch of the shadowlands 9.25 differences have finally been cast aside permanently as blizzard implement cross-faction play for certain areas of the game changing the direction of the two factions forever before we go on though i want to talk about food buffs no not in game i'm talking about getting well fed in real life hello fresh is america's number one okay. meal prep kit no more meal planning grow on a longer term commitment no cook stuff and have it coming out into the pan and it comes out being enough willy august 16th like it's your dalaran cooking dailies thank you to hello fresh for the sponsor let's talk well back over in classic well we are uh, certainly a few just to make it clear hello fresh sent a lot of us actually sponsorship I uh, uh, deals um to twitch streamers and stuff as well so i don't know if they i didn't actually read through it i was like ah uh, i don't know that i i want to have the sponsorship thing all over pasted all over my uh my channel so i didn't really um you know i didn't really bother to read read through it but basically my job was to get you guys signed up and then i got a, a, a few bucks out of it or something years off of that happening in fact in many ways we are seeing similar trends repeat themselves however at an even faster pace than they did in retail players are a lot more savvy nowadays to important factors that make a server work or fail the faction representation the total look at this the overall balance is pretty close. You know, the overall is pretty close. I played on Ferlina. I played on a little bit on Grobulus. Grobulus is the server that I wish I was still on. Like, to be honest, I wish I was still on Grobulus. Um, 
local population and of course server type we still do have the old school pvp servers well i call them pvp servers but as we will see that's They're not PvE. really why people are choosing to play there now i have to add here for the information we'll look at we don't have the full picture as to the population and a really accurate faction representation across servers what if lays sponsored me Pfft, i'm in and we never will because blizzard holds that information what we do have though is fairly good ways of predicting how things look one of these tools is a site called ironforge.pro it tracks the number of players participating in arena each week as well as the number of characters who have appeared on warcraft logs a site that tracks rate performance this means the data is representative of the end game player base much more so than the levelers gatherers or just well more casual players who don't do group content outside of dungeons really all the same i think it's been a valuable tool to assist players in making decisions on where to play as well as tracking how things are looking overall because that overall number the one at the top has never been too bad as of today there's a few percent more horde than alliance and it's always been within that small margin overall in classic there was a higher proportion of alliance players and now that's taken a shift to horde in tv when ice when we started on on Fairlina. It was about it was about fifty six percent alliance on Fairlina, and you know forty four percent horde. Of course, we had the Asmund Gold factor. You know he had ten guilds, all full. You know like one thousand people on each guild. Um, Esfon his guild, stay safe in his guild. Um, so there was a, a numbers advantage, but ultimately horde won the war. Basically, is what happened. But we, I, I ended up, I guess, six months in to Classic, or maybe even, maybe even a little bit longer than that, maybe eight months. I went to Heartseeker kind of off on the whim just to kind of like create a character, a Horde character, on a 99% Alliance server just to roam around and PK people. And it got popular enough that our guild grew to the size of two full raids, and it was really kind of a lot of fun. Like, we all looked back at it and had some really good memories. But ultimately, that server died. We, I, we then transferred back to Ferlina, or I was still playing on Ferlina rating and stuff like that. And at that time, Ferlina and, and Horden Alliance were roughly about the same population-wise, even according to these charts. But for some reason, and I don't know why, but for some reason, Alliance started to slowly leave the server. And I, I, don't, I really don't know why. And suddenly... It was, you know, it was 50-50, and then it was 55-45, and then it was 60-40, and, and then it's a slippery slope. If it goes past 60-40, the server at that point is pretty much done for. Um, any server that has gone past 60-40 has pretty much been completely wiped out of one faction or the other. So um, I don't know that Blizzard can actually do anything to change it save for just not allowing people to transfer off. Because if they were to put up a fresh server, the, 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 the fresh servers that they're going to have for Wrath are going to be, a lot of them are going to be alliance dominated. Why? Because of the human racial. It's just simply going to be dominated by alliance. If you're wanting to PvP, you're going to want the human racial. Um, for PvE racials, Horde is still fine. Like, or control racials are still very, very, very good, so... BC. And racials and everything else aside, I'm convinced Blood Elves and Whore Paladins are the single largest contributor to this by a huge margin. Yet the more we peel back the layers and begin to look at more relevant numbers as to how things are, well, it just looks worse and worse. If we look at only PvE servers, some 65% of the player base is Alliance. That's not such a small margin after all. But hey, that's PvE, it doesn't matter as much, right? Well, sure, so let's look at PvP then and ah not so good either overall about 60 percent horde 40 percent alliance well that would mean we won the war for every two on pvp servers horde, horde won the war man that's what happened alliance players you would encounter you should expect there to be three horde on average but no in reality it's worse than this because on an individual basis for each server which is what really matters when we're breaking down these numbers from the data we can see the vast majority <laughs> of pvp servers fall outside of the 60 40 margin in fact most of the large servers in the world only have one relevant faction on them players have sorted themselves into environments where they will not experience any open 
transfer was a bad idea. I, I agree. Like Blizzard is at fault for some of this because they they could have done something to stop it and they didn't. You know, I mean, that's just the, that's just the truth. They could have done something to stop it and they didn't. In fact, they, they allowed it to happen. They gave free transfers, all that sort of stuff. They should have made it so that um, people that were on low pop servers, like the Alliance side, could transfer their whatever their alliance characters to another alliance server that, you know, was, you know, get, was close enough to hoard or whatever. But instead they allowed all the alliance to basically just travel, uh, transfer to benediction, you know, semblance of faction balance at all and for Raph the Lich King you should very much expect this trend to it's continue gonna not change. because when the scales begin to tip when a faction gains that noticeable foothold and advantage over the but other like I said if it goes past 60 40 that's it the server's dying like it, you need to really start to worry about, about your sort server when it goes to like like 61 39 you need to start worrying because it's a slippery slope and it I don't think I've ever seen it rectify itself at that point. Like, look at this, Ferlina. Th I don't know how old this is, but this is back in the day when I remember when I was telling you it was like 56 or whatever, 55, 45. This, this is from early classic. I don't know when, when he's got these charts from, but the other one, it's only a this is definitely not recent. matter of time before the other half leaves for good. Over time, Blizzard has tried to incentivize players to move to servers that would balance things out more. Through Wait, was it six? Hold on. Of time before the other. How, how many players was it? Yeah, okay. So this was definitely during Classic when it was only like 6,000. This was definitely like like classic so this is not recent at all advantage over the other one it's only a matter of time before the other half leaves for good over time blizzard has tried to incentivize players to move to servers that would balance things out more through free character migrations but it's never really worked out after all who would choose to move to a server that could also just die off in a few months time blizzard would have to quite literally force move players to make any difference and with wrath of the lich king they will be doing that. It was announced a short while ago. Blizzard will be closing off loads. I, of I've got to remember this. I totally forgot about this. I've still got characters on Heartseeker from when I was playing Horde there. I need to get them transferred off. Of the very low population classic realms are moving the leftover players to more active servers instead. They have never done this in the history of World of Warcraft existing. It's a drastic step to address players feeling as though they have to be on a... How do you guys feel about this? Because right now they're giving you the, I think they're giving you the opportunity still. I'd, I'll have to check. Maybe it's too late, but I think you've got till like August 8th. I think it even says here. Third character automatically moved during the realm consolidation on August 9th. Yeah, so I think you've got to do it before August 9th. So by August 8th. Otherwise, your character is just automatically moved. And I don't think you've got a cho choice as to where it's going to. They're just going to automatically consolidate it, them all onto one server, basically. A large server. Dr I think I think the highest level character I've got on on heart on heart seeker still is like level thirty or something like that. That's because it is, however, it's not really affecting that many. Oh, Jesus, look at this. There's heart seeker right there. Let's start a guild on hard seeker. Let, oh, we can't because they're going to close the server down. People overall. But speaking of large servers, we have what is the real subject for today's video. Fire more. Fire more the server, that is. It's been through one hell of a journey. At the start of the Burning Crusade, it had a decent population, pretty close to 50 50, with more horde overall and a raiding cap of around 10,000 players. In January of 2022, the server saw a huge volume of transfers on both sides of the horde and the alliance. Guilds tend to organize mass server swaps on a certain date from their current server, where they feel things are going poorly, to a much larger one. And with the popularity of Discord, and guildmasters generally talking to each other about things like this, it doesn't take many people to convince potentially hundreds that they're being swept up and off to another server if they wish to remain with the guild. And mostly these transfers aren't just on a whim either. You scroll down ironforge.pro and there is an absolute graveyard of servers that are due to be closed soon. Remember on classic there's no sharding, no cross faction, no cross server tech. Your server is all you have in order to find other players to play with and as per available data firemore's raiding and pvp population ballooned from some 22,000 at the end of december 2021 to an insane 
35,000 by the end of January 2022. It had taken the server from huge to the largest server. Holy shit, look at the look at the drop here in the world within the space of one month though interestingly at this point in time the server was still gaining players on both the horde and alliance usually it's one way or the other and firemore continued to grow as tbc progressed seemingly infinitely even to the point of seeing dreaded queues make a reappearance during summer yes for firemore they didn't have to wait until wrath content is out before they got queues again positioning queue i wonder i wonder if anyone threw their mouse through their uh, monitor when they saw this way to fall. On the 23rd of May, Blizzard finally took action. At some point, they had to do something, and this was it. Firemore was locked. This means that transfers were closed, and unless you already had a character on the server, you were unable to make a new one. The results of this were pretty instantaneous. Week on week, several thousand less players were being actively tracked on Ironforge.pro. From the date of the server lock to six weeks later, some 11,000 less players were found as active logging in and playing. While the lock had certainly had the intended result, the server wasn't growing anymore. In fact, the opposite was happening. The population was now dropping at an alarming rate. Though it wasn't just through the lack of new players, people were finally leaving Firemore. This is what Blizzard had been trying to get people to- So they, 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 why did they, I don't know, maybe they shouldn't have allowed people to transfer off. Like they should have said no, I guess they had paid. That's it right there. They, they still allow people to transfer off because they were paying to do so. To do forever with their actions in regards to servers. Success it wasn't a free transfer to get off Firemall, I bet. It was it, it, like they literally, like everyone was paying for it. Then, um, not quite. Drive the server queues up to the point where people can't stand playing there anymore and then charge them to get off of it. This is a really brilliant, I mean, if you think about it, Blizzard has created a game. Think about it this way. This is something that actually one of my guild, one of my officers said actually. Blizzard has like the biggest scam going on where they create a game and they're, they're like, hey, we're going to create a game as close to the original as possible, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be great. And everybody starts rolling there. And then they allow servers to get to the point where they're so out of whack that one faction starts to die. So for example, in Heartseeker, the Horde side basically completely died. So in order for anyone to actually play the game as it was before, they had to pay Blizzard to be able to transfer off the server to go play on another server when Blizzard said that they would be able to play the game like they did before. Instead of allowing them just to, uh, that's, I mean. Quite. See, despite Firemore being. They allow something to get so out of control that the only way for the player to fix it is for the player to pay Blizzard to transfer them onto a server to play the game as it as it's supposed to be able to be played huge it's and ridiculous. relatively well balanced for its size alliance had had the numbers advantage for some time and this server lock had been an unintended catalyst for a side effect the faction minority exodus horde began to finally take advantage of the free character migrations away from this mega server to wait it was free it was free Oh my god. A smaller server, perhaps? A place where the Horde needed a few more players to really push a 50-50 balance? No, of course not. Don't be silly. The majority of them went straight to Gehennis, the largest, by far, Horde-dominated server in Europe, which as of a recent reset had about 20,000 Horde players logged and some 69 alliance. Ironforge.pro shows the full extent of how many players left during a one-week period, and even wow. I'm surprised at this. It feels like the people left on Firemore didn't get... So what it was, it went from 9,000, so basically an 8,000 drop? Whoops. Period, and even I'm surprised at this. It yeah. feels like the people left on fire more little over eight thousand this looks is like. an alliance server now between the 6th and one and the week. 13th of july fire more lost transfers. about eight thousand active raiding characters that's like saying 320 25 man raiding groups have left the server and the In majority have gone straight to a server where there's only horde players week. during the same time frame which was only a week mind you Gehennis gained 6,000 new active raiders in fact so many players have moved from firemore to Gehennis that blizzard had to close free character transfers to stop the never-ending tide of new of course they had to 
close the free transfers. They, they weren't charging money for it. People who were finally escaping their locked server. As of July 19th, Blizzard have finally announced that Firemall will be reopened oh for transfers God. and new characters. The aftermath of the server lock has lost Firemall about half of its concurrent player base and completely removed one faction from the server. I mean, take a look at the bulletin board add-on for Horde here. This add-on combines messages from all chat channels and aims to help players find groups and services. This is not what a healthy server looks like on this add-on. Oh. Here's Firemore Alliance just for comparison by the way. So the server lock, it kind of worked in that it reduced the number of people playing on Firemore, but it kind of didn't because it encouraged the Horde to transfer to another mega server. Back in January of 2022, the classic community- Why do, why do they not do something like make it so that if your server is whatever, 55% or like once it gets to 55%, it locks transfers to that server. Like it just locks transfers to that server. You can transfer Horde to that server, but you can't, you can't transfer Alliance to that server anymore. Council made a forum post about faction balance in classic World of Warcraft, which game- If you want to start a new character there, that's fine. But transfer a new one? Producer Agrend replied on all fronts in detail as to thoughts from Blizzard's point of view, saying things such as free character migrations have been attempted on many counts as relief valves, but often players didn't want to go to the locations offered with justifiable concerns they would just have the same experience as their current server. Merging for Blizzard didn't make sense, in fact it's never been done for any version of World of Warcraft, they assume if servers are the way they are and that's an environment that's been built by players, why would you force them to change it? Would they consider incentivizing people playing on low population servers? If so, how? Would they consider capping factions perhaps? Well, they said it would limit player choice way too much given how we know servers tend to end up. How about free transfers, but for one specific faction which is becoming problematic? For this regard, he says, it's fairly conclusive that players do not take advantage of free character migrations or paid transfers to move to the underdog faction. It's just not something that happens to a degree to move the needle in a positive direction. It's true they don't but they they needed to step in before it got way out of control you know like they i don't know maybe some sort of incentive for you to, to go to the underdog faction but i personally classic on heart seeker was up there with the best time that i've ever had when we when we went and transferred to heart seeker to play on the the like one percent side we had an absolute blast there and it's like i I would love to do it again. Like, honestly, it would be a lot of fun to actually grab a bunch of people that are playing whatever, it doesn't even matter what server they're on, but go make characters on one of these servers that are imbalanced and just do the same thing again. We had so much fun on Heartseeker roaming around and just killing people like, oh, like everywhere in the world. It was the best fun in Classic. And it would be a lot of fun to do that in TBC. The problem with TBC is world pvp sucks because flying mounts and because summoning stones it just it you know it just changes the whole aspect of the game um but it would still be fun like don't get me wrong it would still be fun but um i don't know that anyone will do that we've talked about going to benediction and just kind of rolling with another guild and and you know rolling as a guild and not not tyrants per se um, the guild that I, I guild lead on, Ferlina, but that's basically the same thing that we did on Heartseeker in kind of our spare time and see who would be interested in actually doing that sort of thing. Just roaming around and being, you know, the people that are actually creating some excitement. Um, but Blizzard needed to step in long before they did. And in, instead, instead, they basically encouraged it by allowing people to, by encouraging people to transfer off. Here's free transfer. Oh, wait. Now only the, 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 the side with less people on it is transferring off and the other side isn't. And it just turns into a snowball effect and gets out of control. And offering that move as the only option that players have for free transfers is likely not going to be positively received by players who are unhappy with their current realm. What about cross realm play then? Is this just the end game for World of Warcraft servers? For this he says, what if it was restricted to only people on your friends list or in the same community? I hope this guy's not suggesting this for classic, like cl cross realm stuff for classic. Like I, I really get tired of people suggesting crap like this from retail 
to bring it into classic like just stop already unity as you what if this only worked in instance content these are a few things that might be cool to explore it's definitely worth talking about more but this is something we'd really have to think long and hard about perhaps most interestingly he says overall the data we have suggests that players don't seem to want an even playing field and or they care more about having their faction be heavily populated and lively than they care about their realm being balanced it really is quite a complex complicated system. Take Firemore for instance, Blizzard does nothing, the population over triples from the start of TBC. They take action and nearly half of the player base goes and one faction entirely leaves. In many ways this kind of feels like the retail faction balance conversation all over again. By the way, despite having cross server play for years, retail realms are by no means balanced either. Certain content can only be done by players from the same server and the auction house is still a thing too. Got a question for you guys. Do you think it would be um What what do you guys propose would be the actual like way to fix this? Like do you think that and I, and again, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. I'm just throwing things out there. Do you guys think that maybe making and I I hate this idea myself. I'm going to throw it out there anyways making racials on each side equal because that's one of the big driving forces right like the classes are all equal now but a lot of people are, are swapping back and forth because of racials do you think that's something that maybe they have to look at and say you know what we need to fix this because in this expansion they're all swapping over to you know this in in wrath they're going to switch to alliance because they're of the human racial changes um you know like i i don't i i i'm not saying that's an answer i or, or like a way to fix it i'm just spitballing but there's got to be ways to uh fix it if you've got any ideas throw them out there in chat or if you're watching this video on youtube definitely leave a comment down below and let me know what you do to fix it Two. Nevertheless, balance was an active talking point for years and years, with Blizzard saying, we're talking about it, we're aware, we're thinking about it, we're considering our options, and all that time the solution loomed. The drastic- Uh, scroll up, like I said before, they're at force of 50-50 split, uh, with anyone new trying to transfer would not be to the other faction. I, I think that if you're, if you're transferring, you should not be allowed to go to a server that is severely faction imbalanced. Like period, like you, like fa transfers to that server are locked for that faction. Like I honestly, I think maybe that's the maybe that's like if if horde have fifty five percent of the server, more horde can't transfer there. And uh, you know, and and that's basically it. Like it, it, you cannot physically transfer more characters there, because once you slip past that, the server dies step that everybody knew would really solve things but it felt as though it couldn't be justified until it was and that was cross-faction play in classic it's similarly been a day one talking point blizzard are trying to fix things they're aware of the problem but what's our obvious solution that we all know would fix things surely not sharding and cross server play we have seen firsthand with retail it doesn't work out long term still i hate seem that to just idea want big servers with one faction on them should there only be a handful of mega servers per a region with a huge amount of layering what about the war mode model instead of pvp no. and PvE servers is that what classic is missing but the ball oh my god please holy shit is in blizzard's court to make a decision if anything will truly change because player trends won't and blizzard can make the difference firemore has shown that even the largest server in the world isn't immune to drastic change when blizzard takes action as of today despite overall faction balance standing within a few percent of each other across all tracked servers only five of those servers are within a five percent faction balance average between the horde and the alliance but hey there's the wrath classic fresh servers surely things will be different this no, they time won't. i mean blizzard hopes so the totally won't be one horde server and one alliance server surely it won't happen again one of the big reasons a lot of people came back to world of warcraft and rolled a pvp server back at the start of classic was for the open world for their conflicts and for pvp experiences that you could no longer is find this a tyrant's video who is this
Look, is this a tyrant's video? No. Detail, and we didn't even have to wait for flying for that illusion to be shattered. In reality, things have followed the same path as retail, but at an even. Uh, I just started playing World of Warcraft. Do you have any tips for beginners? I picked a Night Elf Rogue. Yeah, re-roll. Don't play a Night Elf and don't play Rogue. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, maybe maybe a different race for Rogue, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go Night Elf. But um, if you just started, it's not too late to change. And faster rate. If you're new or return, Rogue Rogues are going to be really good in in Wrath, but uh, Night Elf is not the best race to play Rogue. But it's you know if you want really want to play a Night Elf, go ahead. Running for Wrath of the Lich King, this is kind of how things are now. I would use the site Ironforge.pro to get a good impression of where people are playing. It will also let you know whether your server is dead without you having to pay to log in and find out yourself. Overall though, when it comes to any semblance of faction balance, it feels like all the solutions aren't working. Maybe there just isn't one. Maybe having static servers with two factions just doesn't work as a good long-term format for an MMORPG. But if class Classic is to be different from retail, it has to do things differently from retail, all while sticking to those design pillars that they went over not too long ago, and honestly, I've no idea what they could realistically do. And I'd usually try and propose my own ideas here, but I've really nothing that either hasn't already been suggested a million times over, or completely breaks the whole nurture and protect social experiences aspect of the game. So I guess let me know below if you've been affected by any server problems, felt the need to transfer. Also, if you have any idea of what could be done to improve things in the game, drop that down below as well. That's about everything from me today though. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you all in the next one very soon. Anyways, guys, that's another great video from uh, Willie. Um, again, like and uh, the links will be down below my video. Um, definitely go and watch it or go and subscribe to his channel. Watch his videos. Uh, he puts a lot of effort into them. Um, we love watching them. I watch his videos all the time. Um, I think the the main problem is, and again, hindsight is twenty twenty. Blizzard needed to step in and do something about the max S exodus or um, people transferring to a server. Like once the server got to a point where, where it was 55%, they needed to lock it off to that faction alone and just leave it. And if people didn't like it, too bad. They can't transfer to somewhere that's locked. And that's it. If your alliance, you want to transfer that server, hey, that's no problem. Fine, transfer to that server. Give them some, give them some sort of an incentive maybe to transfer to that server if they're alliance and it's a little, you know, a little under fifty percent or something like that. I I don't know what that would be. Maybe uh, uh I I don't know what what it could be. Maybe uh, more gold drops or or maybe an extra piece of loot drops or I don't know, but something to encourage people to actually transfer to that server. Not everyone's going to transfer to one of these underpopulated servers, create a guild, and go on a war rampage uh, like we did on Hardseeker. But either way, um, anyways, if you're watching my video and you enjoyed my commentary, please like and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps me with my algorithm. I stream six nights a week from Tuesday until Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We talk about all things nerdy, uh, whether it's uh, gaming, primarily World of Warcraft, but other games as well particularly the upcoming MMOs. Uh, we also like to talk about Star Wars, Game of Thrones, all that sort of fun stuff. So uh, feel free to come uh, talk to me on my channel, twitch.tv slash Aladar, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a good day.